Hey, this is Mead with AUSquared.com, and uh, this is going to be uh, a pretty big lesson uh, and one that's really important for painters, um, uh, especially. So we're going to go over how to build a stretcher bar, stretch the canvas on top of it, and uh, prime and prepare the canvas, and uh, build a frame for it. So we're going to start with part one, which is of course building the stretcher bars. So the first thing you have to do when you build a stretcher bar is decide uh, how big that you want it to be. Um, and I usually just kind of uh, more or less uh, systematically wing it. I, I use my hands to decide um, how large relative to me the painting, uh, painting needs to be. Um, and that way you get a more interesting format than the standard ones that you can buy 18 by 24, 16 by 20, whatever. So let's go over how to do that. All you need to do this is uh, some tape. So um, you're gonna go up to your wall. Take two pieces of tape. Figure out how big you want the uh, painting to be, say this big. Stick your tape on the wall. So there you figured out the width. And then take another two pieces of tape. Figure out how, how tall you want it to be. Then all you're gonna do is uh, measure these two points and you've got your dimensions. Pretty simple, um, but really effective for uh, picking out formats that are good relative to the viewer and to the distance that you're going to be uh, uh, looking at the painting. So when you're building stretcher bars, the first part is to um, buy and select wood. You're going to go to the hardware store and get, um, uh, I get select pine. Um, that's kind of a higher grade, but it's not, you know, it's not a hardwood, so it's not too expensive. Um, you have less problems with warp that way. Um, you're going to get uh, either a couple of 1x2s or one 1x4. One if you get a 1x4, you're going to split it down the middle um, and make it into two 1x2s. I find it's a little more cost effective to do that. Um, so then once that's done, you're going to uh, construct an L shape. Uh, normally, I, uh, I would say that there's several ways that are correct to do something depending on what you want to do, but this is probably the only time that I'll tell you there's only one way to build a stretcher bar, and this is it. Um, there is no variation. If you deviate, uh, your your stretcher bar will warp. This doesn't matter in the beginning when you're like learning and practicing, but later on when you're selling pieces, uh, charging you know six, seven, eight hundred dollars, you know, uh, for a painting or more than that. If you're charging like ten grand, this is this is like how you want to do it. There's if you deviate, you'll have problems. If you stick to it, uh, you won't. So here we go. All right, I've got two uh, one by twos here. Um, they're pretty short. Normally you'd be working in eight foot lengths, but um, this'll do for the purposes of demonstration. The uh, first thing you're gonna do is sight down the one by twos and, uh, and look for any kind of uh, warp. And you're gonna look at it in both directions. So I can see with this 1x2 that the warp goes this way and that there isn't much warp uh, from side to side looking down at this angle. This one, the warp, there's not much warp. Maybe a little bit going this way. So when you put them together, what you want to do is oppose the warps so that uh, when you make this L shape, which is the only way to do this correctly, uh, that one warp goes this way on this one, and the other warp goes this way. So generally what you're gonna do is put the more severe warp on this part, assuming um, uh, that this is gonna be um, the outer edge of the, of the painting when you uh, uh, apply the canvas to it. So the next step is uh, you're gonna lay the uh, the one by two is down like this. Um, this is going to be the uh, edge that gets glued. So you're going to take take a bead of glue and apply it down the length. 
like so. And then you're gonna place this on top. Um, I'm gonna get some hearing protection since I'm gonna be using a uh, staple gun. So once you're here, you're gonna place the uh, second one by two on top, get it ni lined up nicely. Then uh, if you don't have a nail gun, that's fine. Uh, with traditional nails, you would just start a couple of nails down the length um, to get going um, before you actually put this on top. But I've got an electric nail gun. They're not too expensive and they sort of work. Um, but you kind of have to pound out and finish the nails by hand. So, of course, adhere to all trap safety rules and common sense. And there's plenty of tutorials on that out there. But generally, protect your eyes, protect your ears, and protect your breathing. And don't staple your hand or nail, nail through your hand. Generally, the distance is going to be about um, six to eight inches between these, or enough so that when you look down the edge, that it takes away all, all any gaps here. Um, and these nails aren't here to uh, to actually hold this together; they're here to tack it in place um, until the glue dries. So then I've got the these are a little bit raised, so I'm just going to pound pound them in. I can't feel them. All right. And now you've constructed uh, an nail strip. Uh, the next step is just to uh, let that dry overnight. All right. So the next uh, step in the process um, after your L shape has dried is uh, you have to make a. Um, make another decision. You've already you've already decided how big your, your stretcher bar is going to be. So now you have to decide on whether it's going to be a canvas or a panel um, or, and uh, whether you want this to be uh, uh, deep or shallow um, from the wall to the surface of the, of the canvas. So um, if you're going to construct a panel you're going to leave the, uh, the L shape exactly like this um, uh, and then the panel is just going to be glued on top here or on top here. Um, if you're going to construct a canvas, you have to cut a bevel so that when you stretch the canvas around that it's not going to leave a, uh, a line. Um, you'll notice that with cheap stretcher bars, there's always like a line where you push down on the canvas with your brush and, uh, and, it, and it hits the stretcher bar um, and it looks pretty, pretty ugly and unprofessional. So. Um, we're going to do a shallow canvas, um, so that means that we're going to bevel off a bit uh, down this end. If you wanted to do a, a deep uh, stretcher bar, you would just uh, bevel off a bit from this side. Um, so what's cool about this is once you make this L, you can, uh, you can leave it and store it um, until, you, until you need it. Um, you can just make a bunch of these at once. And then later on, you can decide whether you're going to build a panel, canvas, and, and your dimensions. So it's really convenient um, just to make a bunch of these and, and store them. Okay. So I've decided that I'm going to do a, uh, a shallow uh, canvas. So I'm going to make sure that there's nothing that blades can run into. Uh, I'm going to take out these, uh, these staples. Right. And then uh, one thing I'm going to do is make sure that there's no uh, glue or rough spots on the back where um, this is going to slide against the rip fence. I'm um, just going to check all four of these. And at this point I've decided I, I, I still don't even have to necessarily decide on dimensions yet. Because um, I'm, I'm just ripping down, the, uh, down this bevel. Um, so I like to set a uh, approximately a 20 degree bevel. Uh, 45 is too much. Um, 10 is probably too little, but uh, 15, 20, 25, um, that's a good range.
And again, whenever you're working on a table saw, you want to um, do this when uh, it is unplugged, powers off. The uh, next step after setting the bevel is I want to make sure that, that when I slide this through that the blade isn't up so high that it's going to cut this. Um, and then I'm going to set the uh, rip fit fence distance next. I'm just going to tap it over until I get to that point where I'm not wasting too much material and I'm getting the most out of, uh, out of the stretcher bar. And I'm just going to double check that it's going to fit. These are all basically the same and they'll wind up a good height. So notice this one's a little short so I'm going to set to the distance of this one so that they're all going to be uniform. I'm going to put on all my safety gear and make the cuts. And uh, that right there is why you always use a, uh, a push and, uh, and uh, keep your uh, safety gear on in case you can catch it. All right, uh, now I've got uh, four little bits of stretcher bar, uh, each with a bevel cut into them uh, identically. Um, they should all basically be about the same depth now. Um, so we'll move on to the uh, next step in the process which is cutting uh, the 45 degree angles to make all these uh, happen. Alright, it's at this point in the process where you actually need to know uh, the dimensions of your final canvas. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and mark that. So the maximum this one can be is about 14 and 5 eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it uh, uh, 14 uh, and a quarter. Um, and then these two are about the same. So the maximum on this one is going to be about 18 and a quarter, so I'll just make that 17 and three quarters. And you can just write down uh, relevant dimensions uh, on here. So these are going to be my 14 and a quarter, these are going to be 17 and three quarter. So, um, uh, you can do this process uh, whether or not you have sophisticated equipment. Um, I have the luxury of having a, uh, a fairly uh, decent chop saw. Um, so if you have a chop saw, you're going to check the angles here. First, you're going to check to make sure that the blade is set at exactly 90 degrees. And then uh, uh, using your speed square. And then you're going to uh, pull the blade down and then check and line it up to make sure that the blade is exactly at 45 degrees. And again, do this while the uh, saw is powered off and unplugged. 
Um, and the uh, little trick that makes this work is you want to stop this little tab from locking into what it thinks is 45, um, even though that's probably just a little bit off. Just put a little block of wood under the tab, or just take the tab off entirely. Um, because we're working, since we're working with art, we need a higher level of precision than you would need in industry. Uh, general safety rules again, uh, protect your hearing, protect your eyes, protect your breathing. Um, and then when you're working with the chop saw, uh, never cross your hands uh, when you pull the blade down, keep them uncrossed. Um, uh, and don't wear any loose clothing. Um, but uh, safety stuff, please uh, watch some videos on that. There's there's uh, plenty of instruction for that out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, all the same 45 degree cuts, then swing it over and make uh, make the rest of them in the other direction. The next part of the process is I'm just going to go ahead and measure out my, uh, my dimensions. This again is going to be 14 and a quarter on the short. And 17 and three quarter on the long. All right, there we go. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and swing the blade in the other direction. Again, using the uh, handy dandy speed square to uh, line it up correctly so it's an actual 45. If you give it a tap and you don't hear it clink, it's all right, I'm going to make my cuts. All right, this next tip is, uh, is a big uh, part of the process and is totally ninja. Um, what you're gonna do to check to make sure that these are exactly the same length is you're gonna put them back to back and you're gonna uh, put them together and feel. Um, if you can't feel a difference, you're in good shape. And these are close. These are definitely within uh, a 30 second of an inch. Um, and that's well beyond are well within the uh, margin of tolerance that you need for uh, art. So that means when these get together, they're going to be pretty darn square. All right, so the next part is uh, we're going to put this, uh, put it all together. Uh, start looking like a stretcher bar in a minute. Okay, if you've uh, constructed the uh, the bar itself properly, this uh, this next bit should be pretty painless. Um, what you're gonna do, uh, you're, you're gonna need some kind of staple gun. Um, I've got an electric one here, it works pretty well. Um, but you can use a, a, a hand-powered staple gun. It works just fine. But your hands do get a little tired doing it. So first you're going to uh, 
lay out the stretcher bar just to double check and make sure that uh, that everything's within the uh, realm of, of reason as far as how it's gonna line up um, and it should be okay so uh, what makes this work is uh, is the uh, uh, strap clamp um, and you can get ones that actually have uh, have mechanical um, uh, devices that'll cinch it down pretty tight, but I don't really think it's necessary for the amount of tension you need just to kind of hold this together. Um, so, uh, this is eventually, when we once we glue it, this is gonna go around and kind of uh, hold everything together. So I like to just kind of, before I get started there, I like to uh, get it within the realm of reason uh, of, of the size, um, expand it a little bit, and then uh, then I'm gonna tip up the uh, the bars. So the uh, the next step here is you're gonna glue. Um, I glue both sides. And don't sand the inside because you want a phys nice physical bond. Uh, you want the glue to go uh, actually into the wood and penetrate it some. Okay, and I'm gonna get it kind of set up. Start to pull the strap clamp tight. Once I get it kind of uh, snug, I'm gonna adjust it so that it's not on the bottom, so that it's kind of uh, in the center of the height. That way when I cinch it down, it kind of pulls everything evenly. I'm just gonna get this into a position where I can start to actually pull some tension on it. I'm gonna go fairly tight with this. Um, and then at this point, what I wanna do is just check the corners, and make sure they uh, that the corners line up um, and just get them in place. Uh, a little bit of gap here isn't going to make too big of a difference. Okay. So for this next step, you want to check to make sure that it's square. You could use a, a framing square, but there's a much simpler tool that you can do. Um, and that is a tape measure. And all you're going to do is measure from corner to corner, and if the, uh, if the lengths are uh, equal, then it's square, um, and if not, you just kind of have to adjust it until it uh, is square or close. So, I am a sixteenth over three quarters, that direction, and actually up to seven eighths on this, so I'm going to just push that until it splits the difference. Double check this a couple of times. And there I'm in good shape. Um, the uh, next part, um, once, you've got, uh, once you've got it squared out, is to uh, staple along the, uh, along the inside, flip it over, and staple along the uh, on the uh, back. And I usually do about five staples. Again, this is just to hold the glue, hold this in place until the glue dries. This isn't actually holding this together. Okay. 
and I'm going to flip it over. Do the same thing. Okay, that's done. So the uh, next step is just to uh, let this dry uh, overnight. And uh, already you can see that we've got something approximating a, uh, a stretcher bar that's uh, about ready to go. And at this point you can, um, if you'd like, you can take a knife or sandpaper and just kind of uh, knock off any burrs. Depending um, on how tightly you're going to stretch the canvas, uh, you're going to uh, want to sand down this edge a, a little bit so that it's not too sharp. Alright, there we go. At that point, we're basically done. I'm going to leave that stuff to dry and we have successfully constructed a uh, stretcher bar um, to stretch a painting over. Um, so the next step in the process is to actually stretch uh, some canvas over it um, once it's all dry and uh, I'll, I will show you that uh, very soon uh, in part two. Again, this is Mead with AUSquared.com. If you have any questions or want any uh, lessons uh, recorded, uh, shoot me an email. Um, uh, the email address is mead uh, at au squared dot com. Um, so I hope this lesson helped you guys a lot. It's one of the more important ones uh, that we'll cover, um, and you will be using it your entire uh, career as a painter. Um, so thanks a lot for watching. Take care.